Tricolor Turf War was the new mode added to Splatoon 3's world premiere Splatfest event, and people have very mixed opinions on it. And honestly, I can understand where a lot of people are coming from. I just want to say before I start this that I was on Team Scissors, so honestly, I, I did pretty okay in Tricolor Turf War, but I saw firsthand a lot of people come into my chat on my stream and ask me things like, Hey Vic, how are you winning in Tricolor Turf War? I've lost like five matches in a row. I've lost like 10 games and only won one. I don't understand how to win. How do I fix this? In the end, it comes down to the difficulty of the mode. Tricolor Turf War was built as a comeback mechanic, a way for the two losing teams, in this case, the two attacking teams, to be able to come back and get more points against the winning team, aka the defending team, at the six hour mark of this particular Splatfest. When we hit the real Splatfests in Splatoon 3, it'll start at the halfway point, whenever that is. If a Splatfest is for one day, for example, it'll be at the 12 hour mark. If a Splatfest is for two days, it'll be at the one day or 24 hour mark. We'll see in Splatoon 3 how long they choose to make the Splatfests. Imagine if they're all like three days long. Uh oh, Splatoon 3! I would assume that Nintendo wanted to have as many tri-color turf war battles happen as possible, given that they did not allow the players on Team Scissors, the defending team, to opt out of playing tri-color turf war. If this is changed in the future, it will allow players to avoid tri-color if they don't want to play it. But this shouldn't have to be the case. A mode shouldn't be so difficult for some players, they don't want to play it at all. But if nothing is going to be done to the mode, it may in the end be the best option. But if you can't avoid it, how do you win it, you may ask? You need fast things, fast bombs, fast splatting weapons, things that are able to keep the opponents from getting into the center. Either you just turn around and prevent them from getting in the middle, as many players opt to do on Sturge and Shipyard with weapons such as splatlings or snipers, or you just always have somebody at the ready, ready to chuck a bomb into the middle when an opposing player throws in themselves for the ultra signal. However, you can't always have somebody watching. All it took was one wipeout and bada bing bada boom, now you're playing turf war against that sprinkler the whole time. The trick, of course, was to go and run off into the enemy base, to go and paint their side and prevent the enemy team from spending all of their time in the center. But that also meant you couldn't be in the center. And if you were playing tricolor turf war with people that you weren't communicating with, it was a... It was, it was kind of a pain. It was kind of a pain to make sure that everything was being taken care of all the time unless you never ever died besides like once or maybe twice if you were feeling a little fancy. And this gets us to our first fix. Mayhaps our ding dang ultra signals shouldn't last forever? <laughs> That's all they gotta do. They could have had some kind of mechanic such as, oh hey, the ultra signal goes away after a minute of being used. That way, your team would still be rewarded for quite a long time if you managed to get that ultra signal, but it wouldn't be an end-all be-all for the defending team to be able to eventually be able to paint those areas again. If they keep the ultra signal permanent, they could always change how it works, maybe make it start weak and get stronger over time. So teams are rewarded if they get the ultra signal very early into a match, but less and less if they get it later along the game. Of course, the opposite could also be done. It could start very strong and maybe as time goes on, get a bit weaker. So the defending team has some chance at mounting a comeback instead of watching their points get lower and lower and <laughs> often have a hard time fixing the problem. There is another problem though, and it comes in a way that clout is distributed via the tricolor turf war. As people know, the main scoring mechanic of Splatfest comes from average clout. That means that the clout earned by players from winning or losing their matches is divided up and tallied comparatively to get the results for the Splatfest. If you go onto the Splatnet 2 app, you can see exactly how much clout players got on average for both teams. Sometimes these values were really close. Looking at you, chaos versus order. <laughs> this takes into account the high likelihood of getting also those 10x and 100x battles. But here's where things get a little wild. The clout earned from playing in the tri-color turf war was pretty significant. The way clout is normally determined per match is simple. The amount of points that you painted plus a 1000 clout bonus if you won. That's supposed to be it. 
But for Tri-Color Turf War, you got the points you painted, and then a lot of bonus points if you won. For the defending team, they got an extra 3,000 points if they won the game. However, for the attacking team, they got 5,000 points if they won, plus another 2,500, that's 2,500 points, if they got an Ultra Signal. And if they got the second Ultra Signal, they got another 2,500 points. That's a lot of clout. This meant that even if the defending team players won, Team Scissors in the case of the World Premier Splatfest, but at the same time, an attacking team player got the Ultra Signal, the defending team got their 3,000 points. Yes, but the attacking team players still got an extra 2,500 bonus points. This meant that the only way to prevent massive point gains for any of the attacking teams was to absolutely prevent anyone from touching and using the Ultra Signal for the whole three minutes. Not impossible. Again, surely difficult though for players still learning the ropes of Splatoon 3. A quick fix for Tricolor Turf War might be just to lower the amount of points earned from the game mode. The issue here is we really don't know how heavily the defending team lost, nor how much Tricolor was played in comparison to regular matches. Seeing as Tricolor Turf War has the potential to give nearly 3 to 10 times the clout of a regular match, it could skew the results if it's happening too often. We don't have the statistical information to prove it without a doubt though, which is why I leave it as this, like, hypothetical. I do think that Tricolor affected the results, but we don't know how much without more data. I personally believe this mode will function better once players have gotten more time to get used to it. Also, it's likely that more people might be playing together in those groups of four for the defending team in the real game, so that might make a bit of a difference too. I won't be shocked if Nintendo does very little next Splatfest to change how Tricolor Turf War work. They might want to see if the results are different with the full game being out. In the end, if they give players the option to opt out of Tricolor, weaken or change the Ultra Signal mechanics, or lower the clout amounts, the mode might not be as polarizing towards the results. However, if an in-the-lead team can win a couple of fests in the future, we may come to see that Tricolor isn't as much of a problem as we thought. It really is recency bias. We've only had one Splatfest where the in-the-lead team ended up losing across the board to really determine how we all think of Tricolor Turf War. We can't be sure with only a single Splatfest, although it looks like Tricolor is a problem. Thank you for listening to me talk about this, and feel free to leave your opinions or thoughts on Tricolor below. If you like what I say, make sure to subscribe to hear me talk more in the future. Again, I like Tricolor. I hope it gets fixed, and I want to play it more. <laughs> I was able to win more once I started being very aggressive. But again, that's not something for everyone, and that's okay. See you later. Oh,